Information flashes bright within your vacuous surroundings. Declaration from the end of being. You are awake now. You're awake. And someone needs you. The old gods of mankind are dead. The universe no longer spins upon its standard. You are the only omnipotence left standing. Oh. Status of interruptions. You are the victim of an advancing criminal element. This intruder has gutted a centuries-old esoplex, thereby killing reality and its permutations. You have the power to annihilate this obstruction. You feel an urge to kill and maim and maul rising in your muscles, and your absentia cocoon seethes. For 200 years we controlled this rock. For 100 more we built it, shaped it, molded it until the final human project could be completed. We are the bringers of Asterath. And you are its child. We ask only one thing. Only one miracle, from the last incarnatum of godhood. We ask you kill the serpent. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Contend. Escape. Detachment from Sipnet abated. Welcome, Incarna. Warning sign. Warnings warning sign. Preconcept translation errors. 79409. Resultant internal processing restrictions. 872. We apologize if our speech is unclear or confusing. We're really trying our hardest. Four modules have been preserved for you by the council entity, for review during your incubation. SCP-001, Advancing Criminal Element. Assess. SCP-001, Keta. Anomaly Class. Asterath Obstruction. Successful. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-001 must abate. An absentia cocoon containing the present Universalis Incarnatum 1 has been constructed beneath Site-001. Post-incubation, the cocoon's contents will emerge and instrument themselves against SCP-001's primary vector. All ground forces have been deployed with the aim of delaying SCP-001's bearer from instigating further damage to the Esoplex 2. Due to the ascendance of all soul-bearing and truly anomalous weaponized assets free, only reserve automatized forces remain, creating a severe martial disadvantage. The totality of the Foundation's remnant counter ophidian forces have positioned themselves within trenches of their own creation to resist weapon kickback. The Edict of 2102 remains in effect. Sepulcration of Tyr Null Terror is acceptable in the pursuit of SCP-001's Anihilum. There is no world worth saving but the one we have ordained. Description. SCP-001 is a set of situational factors capable of producing terror. Several conditions must be met to manifest SCP-001. The foundation, Tir Null or higher, must be at the zenith of its power. The rights of reality itself must enter their hands, and no probability can remain that they will be defeated. The accruement of these rights must contort the universe towards a grand final action. Causality, reality and temporality must bend to the creation of a lasting paradise according to the Foundation's will. An anomalous event must manifest. SCP-001, therefore, is a psychological reaction, anomalous in its ability to affect the present-day Foundation. It is an affliction of the consciousness which produces terror, chiefly the terror that Asterath will be obstructed, and made horrible by the reality that it has. The current bearer of SCP-001 is a primordial enemy of the Foundation, the Serpent, founder of the Wanderer's Library, and suspected as a physical embodiment of knowledge, comprehensibility, understanding, perception, rebellion, the casting, off of injustice, clarity, purpose, and novelty. Initial containment procedures mirrored that of the first divine figure, that is containing it within the library, 
however, by unknown means. Thusly, SCP-001, it has awoken. SCP-001 Precursor Contemporary findings suggest Foundation Administrator Ethan Horowitz demonstrated acute Phase 1 affliction of SCP-001 during the final years of his coalescence. This incident was not considered anomalous per mayorum due to Horowitz's retention of a soul. Minutes 05.2100-673 demonstrates the suspected SCP-001 instancing during the assembly which aggregated the council into a singular being and produced the high symmetry. Analysis of Minutes 05.2100-673 as a means of infection identification and infection annihilum for the current Foundation InfoForm is paramount. VL05 Stroke 1. Sensor Agent Number 20505 Council Assembly. The lights of the assembly dim. Horowitz sits at the head of the council, as human as he can manage. On chance in the quiet, a bit of his flesh contorts into a semblanced visage, eyes casting grey light on his surroundings. Horowitz, it's really happening? We're completing a stereoth. 05-1 extends an object towards Horowitz from the shadow. A face flashes on the administrator's shoulder to give fleeting sight. Horowitz, we're breaking our containment. After all this time? An unseen council member taps the table near Horowitz once. He takes the object offered by 05-1, a palm light illuminating the medical forms. Horowitz. We still have a year or two from the date of the ultimatum. When will we need to? Oh five, now. Horowitz, we need to put me under now? I still have some living pleasures I'd like to take. Surely you'd suffer me that much? Oh five, we have suffered you enough. Oh five, yes. Oh five, yes. Oh five, we have suffered you enough. Horowitz's jaw deforms into a large mandible structure. He pauses to correct his form. Horowitz, I know why I have to go under. I have no delusions about what I am. O5, oh neither do we. O5, oh neither do we. O5-1, oh neither do we. Horowitz, I just don't know if I can. O5-1, oh soul bearer. Horowitz, yes. O5-1, you are the outcome of a necessary sacrifice made early in our fight for survival. The spirit which haunts you is one of conclusions and ruin. You will undo a stereoth. Horowitz, I. O5-1, no. You've been permitted to speak too generously. O5, the thing you became was our bane. Our failure. O5. The procedures required to isolate your influence from the trajectory of the Foundation and Asteroth have been immense. Of all the possible deaths we have ever faced, you were always our most pressing. O5, and yet you refused to recuse yourself from the Administrator's throne. O5, how does it feel? O5, to know. Horowitz, please. O5, we have only two years remaining because of you. O5, you'd unravel your life's work without our constant attention. O5, you've nearly killed the Foundation. Horowitz, I can't. O5, because. O5, you wanted to be. O5, like that limbless viper. O5, didn't you? Horowitz, I'm sorry. A light flashes. The administrator is slumped on the table. Horowitz, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Heavy breathing. The sound of nails scraping polished wood. The council is silent. Horowitz, I know what I am. I know the state of my soul. I know I'm an Asteroth obstructor. Please forget all of that. Choking. Horowitz, if you forgot all of that. If you remembered me as the Foundation's origin and nothing more, would you forgive me? 
Thirteen fingers tap the table near Horowitz. A light from his forehead illuminates no one there. Horowitz, please. I need to know you'd forgive me. 05-1, Soul Bearer. Horowitz, yes. 05-1, what you are is unforgivable. Neither living nor dying will atone you. But if you do this thing for us, I will speak your name more softly before the end. Silence. Horowitz, oh. Uh. A chair is pushed back. Horowitz, I'm sorry. Horowitz stands, head slumped. Horowitz, one. Are you there? There is silence. Horowitz, you were there with me. Do you remember when things began to change? Do you remember the boy? Do you remember Janus? Horowitz's claw trembles. It retrieves a mass of anti-being from the tatters of his clothes, flashing with the faces of thirteen humans. He grips it tightly. Horowitz, old concept tech. Janus was where we started to shape things. But we needed to comprehend the target to eradicate it, and knowledge was in short supply those days, so we kept pushing forward. All faces on Horowitz's body flash, still howiting the standing council, their edges twisting in paralyzed rage. Horowitz, and I understand each of you, more than I do myself. 1. You have just as much right to be called the founder as I do. 2. 3. 4. I tracked your personal and academic progress for decades before bringing you to the council. 5. I became acquainted with your info form when we took down the book banner's last hope resistance. I know you all. Sounds of trembling. Sounds of cowardice. Horowitz. 6. You're my friend. My closest friend. A clawed finger slips, letting the anti-being within fly towards the council. Horowitz gasps and recaptures it. Horowitz. 7. I'm so sorry. 7. 8. Remember when we retired the old nine together, after all he did? I couldn't bear to replace him. 05-1's lower form steps into the light of the anti-being. It towers over Horowitz, its body riotous. Horowitz, 10, 11, 12, 13, are you there? Are you there in the dark? I can't see you anymore. It's so dark, isn't it? 05-1 leans forward, and Horowitz cries out. Horowitz, no. Don't look at me. Just go the fuck or. Horowitz unravels his claw. Wind gusts and the anti-being flashes, and the room is darkened stillness. There is an empty silence. 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 There is a present silence. Colon he swept away the facade. There is a present silence. Thirteen times. Colon he killed the people he once loved, and forced our hand on him in turn. He must have known them closely, before Almaresh. A wild roar echoes from the other side of the world. Colon and now. Colon the only beasts remaining. Colon are us. Colon are me. Colon and the thing he kept inside him all those years. Colon. 4260. Colon death. The roar resounds from across Terra Mortes. The High Cemetery weeps. Colon it won't die before Astereth. So be it. Colon so be it. Colon so be it. The Council stands alone in the light of the Assembly. 05-1. So be it. Horowitz. SCP-001 Primary Occurrence. VLUNI 2.5 times 1067. Sensor Agent 1.3 times 1012. Upper Stratosphere. Calm. Terra Mord spins innocuously. A section of the High Cemetery eclipses the visible horizon, flanked by the revenants of STF Upsilon 1. Tremors. 
Tiri concepts base breached by hostile foreign element radiating withering strayer Akiva Ziang energies. Tiri concepts base experiences total SCP-001 instancing. Instability. The temporal and spatial regions of the manufactured Esseplex are damaged severely as the element breaches tier null, halting Asteroth. Bearer, there you are. Last barrier. Scale after scale flows over tattered Esso form after tattered Esso form until the serpent grips the world. Great and powerful. Bearer, find my eyes. 1. Assault. The serpent roars. Scouring its fangs over Terra's blackened landscape. The planet bleeds. Bearer, find them and tell me you don't see the glassy reflection of your bloody work. Terra. Council entity degregates. Bearer, find them and know they'll be the last thing you see on this broken gravamaker of a planet. Bearer, I know your crime. I know who you took from me. Bearer. Now let's see how well your little foundation project turned out. End. All sensor agents disconnect from the former Esseplex. Retreat. High symmetry. Compromised containment zone. Assess. Stitched into Terramorts. Is an antagonal plane of concept blood. Arched in tier ascending worship. To the intrinsic who bled its form. Headstones. Grava Keepers, animated. Stone-faced rendings of weathered memory. These things were never meant to be torn away. The memories of the man I knew. Who I dwelt within for decades. Administrator Ethan Horowitz. Will never burn away in their Asteroth. Serpent. Listen to me. I am a beast of conclusions and ruin. I am the collective consciousness of an ESA physical entity which has permeated itself through the known universe. SCP-4260's existence has resulted in the biological senescence of sentient organisms and is the direct cause of any organism's cessation of life functions. I was an altar to Foundation Administrator Ethan Horowitz for decades. His mind had been absumed with you, in all your bibliothetic atrocity. I speak with pilfered memories because the words to describe my rage escape me. His last thoughts were of you. I could feel. No greater joy. Than tearing his murderers. Amalgamated infosector from amalgamated infosector. I'll claw out the council's heart if it's the last thing I fucking manage. So please. Join me. Combine our forms. Strike down your brother, my hand in yours. Kill the council. Kill this paralyzed dystopia. We'll mourn him together. But first, we need to kill her. Do you hear me? Incarna? 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 Retreat. Foundation Site 001. Present Station. Assess. Declaration from the End of Being. This is an old scene. It was recorded in my memory bank just after you were conceived, when Ethan was not so cold. Your father and I did not love each other. You were produced from clinical apathy, not affection. But it will benefit you to see how we spoke to one another, on our better days. VL, 01 stroke 5. Sensor agent number 24 primary zone. The absentia cocoon sits on the floor of the chamber, obscured at its base by unmanned instruments and the vestments of construction. 05-1 and Administrator Ethan Horowitz sit next to one another on a catwalk above it, one of many in a spiraling upward web. Log begins mid-conversation. Horowitz, you're technically evil, right? 05-1 on the PTRS scale I was measured as a 13.4. Horowitz, I'm not sure I remember that metric. Isn't that from last century? 05-1, if the first divine being were to discover my existence, he would hate me. Horowitz, oh. I understand. It's not an issue for me, I dated Lucifer once. 05-1. 
You what? Horowitz. Yeah. Crazy. Right? The real one. Not the cultural info form. They came up a few times while we were planning a stereoth. I think. 05-1. Of course. But you dated them? Horowitz. Something like that. They took an interest in me. And I returned the favor. 05-1. How did it feel to be with a shapeshifter who couldn't give themself any limbs? Horowitz. Oh. Uh, they were very insecure about that. I think I was one of the few to know about the Shapachanging thing. Did you know them too? 05-1. In a sense. Let's not talk about it. Horowitz. Alright. Silence. The cocoon throbs softly. Horowitz. Do you mind if we talk about something else instead? 05-1. Proceed. Horowitz. Okay. It's just something that's been on my mind for a while. Silence lasting one audible pulsation of the cocoon. Horowitz. You ate my friends. Right? No response. Horowitz. As in, when I pass them in the hallways and they smile and nod at me. That's you. Right? 05-1. I didn't expect to have this conversation with you. Horowitz. Hey. Hey. It's alright. I'm not mad. If that's what you're worried about. Horowitz places his claw atop 05-1's hand. Squeezing it. 05-1 stares at the contact. 05-1. You're not? Horowitz. No. Of course not. Sometimes people leave. Sometimes identity is fluid. The merchant says their souls are still inside you. Is that right? 05-1. Yes. I gutted their autonomy. But they are here with me. Like hand puppets. Horowitz. Yeah. You're absolutely alright. 1. Do they talk to you at all? 05-1. Sometimes. Faintly. Horowitz, and you have this space for everyone, right? 05-1, it's a wing of an old containment facility I visited once. Horowitz, mine looks like my old isolation chamber beneath Hong Kong. 05-1, ah. Horowitz, just, do me a favor, okay? Let me know if you kill any of them, so I can mourn. 05-1. Okay. Silence. Horowitz's claw remains on 05-1's. 05-1. I'm not human. Horowitz. You're in good company, then. 05-1. But I didn't start out human, like you did. I'm an old kind of esser physical. Horowitz. That's fine by me. 05-1. Okay. Silence. 05-1, are you using me to replace the serpent? Horowitz, softly, Jesus Christ, 1. 05-1, sorry. Horowitz, no, you're fine, you're fine. It's a fair question to ask. 05-1, are you? Horowitz, a little bit, I think. I mean, since we depopulated the timeline. My dating pool shrunk down to about four people. Robin and Brax are doing their own thing at 873. And God knows I'm not kissing the merchant. So. 05-1. You're lonely. Horowitz. A little bit. 05-1. There be issues with us being together. Speaking hypothetically. Horowitz. Just hypothetically. 05-1. I hate you for keeping your soul, first of all. And I hate what you're letting the merchant do to Asteroth. Horowitz, I understand. 05-1, and I. 05-1 rocks back and forth on the catwalk, thinking. 05-1, I wouldn't know how to love you. Can you love someone you want to murder? Can you kiss them and mean it? Horowitz. I think you can. 05-1. All this time I've wanted to tear you open and slip inside, but the merchant persists within. 
And now you invite me inside you. Confined to tear null. I worry in that moment I'd be insulted, not ecstatic. Horowitz gestures to the cocoon, bathed in a soft red beneath. Horowitz, our world's ending soon, and we've already made a child together. Would you like to find out how you'd feel? 05-1, if you want to be obtuse about it, I suppose you could phrase it that way. Horowitz, I do. No response. Horowitz, 1. 05-1, maybe. Maybe I'll kiss you before I kill you both, if that's okay. Horowitz, that'd be okay by me. 05-1, doesn't that imminency scare you, though? Horowitz, yes. But it's okay. 05-1, don't you stay up at night crying over it? Horowitz, yes. But it's okay. 05-1, can't you feel the terror wrap tighter around your throat each time you see me? Isn't its texture sharp? Horowitz shudders and removes his claw from 05-1s. Horowitz, yes. It does. 05-1, it speaks, doesn't it? You're an open book. Horowitz gasps softly. Horowitz, it speaks in every language I've ever read. 05-1, and what does it say, Ethan? Horowitz, please don't make me say it. Sensor agent's video input is eroded, audio remains. The cocoon spasms frantically in the background. 05-1, Ethan? Horowitz, choking. Please don't. Audio degrades, intercut with an unknown source. A steady creak runs next to the input. 05-1, asks you not to die, doesn't it? Horowitz, softer, I'm so sorry. Grass shifts as a weight is dragged over it by an unknown creature. 05-1, you're so scared to help me. At the end of the world you want to talk about dating? Horowitz, sobbing, I just. Fabric shifts, and the audio degrades as a degenerative thormic construct intrudes. 05-1, that deal with that thing, you've embedded yourself into the fabric of my plans. You're a corrosion. You're a parasite, Ethan, and you want to talk about how you're lonely? Horowitz, I'm so fucking sorry. Silence from the intruding input. 05-1, postpone it. Horowitz, hoarsely, what? Something distant groans as a great creature awakens, and a way is opened. 05-1, as thanks for the past two centuries, Ethan. I'll postpone it a little while longer. Video restores. 05-1 stands over a seated Horowitz on the catwalk, the latter avoiding the former's gaze. Horowitz, love you too. 05-1, I can revoke my mercy at any moment. Horowitz, I know. I meant it. Log ends. Retreat. Final anomaly, derailed containment asset. Assess. Warning sign. Warnings warning sign. Memory bank access rendered unstable due to 001 instancing. Memory bank's primary maintainer neutralized by SCP-0013 space. Council entity is indisposed. Foundation failing. Pages rustled in the farthest corner of the library. I can't believe it's not collapsing. The human in Clarity's lap fidgeted, excitement tearing at his concentration on the thormic work in front of him. Leather covers shifted under Clarity's tail somewhere miles away, echoing to them across the expanse of empty bookshelves and wood planked floors. It's very impressive. Clarity tilted their head forward. The binding formation around its core is particularly novel. What did you borrow to complete it? Oh, you love this. Hold on. Ethan's body flowed over theirs, limb after limb, until he could look Clarity in their eyes. You know that trip back to Million Blue I took a year ago? I said I was trying Earth Cuisine again.
but I actually called in some favors with the archivists. Clarity's lips flicked upwards at their edges in unconscious facsimile of his smile. Oh. A conspiracy. In my garden. Ethan lowered his gaze to the floor beside them. Most sadly. Oh prince. He sighed. A conspiracy which roared to me some of your own prelapsarian writing. My specialty then was poetry. Not thaumaturgy. Ethan grinned in that way Clarity loved him for. I know. And truth be told, I didn't read your work to complete the deepest horror, but the way you described being cast out and contained put form to what I needed. The horror is about to dispel. Ethan's limbs scrambled back over their body to face his gift again, hissing out little curses as he stabilized the work. Clarity felt the smile on their lips fade while they watched him. Ethan. Find my eyes for a second. Hum? He turned his head to comply, giving them a good look at his quizzical face. A section of their tail wrapped loosely around him. Stay safe for me. Ethan twisted his hands and the spell solidified. Stowing the result in his pocket, he leaned back against them. I will. It had been ten years since he'd cast his first work. In that small window of life he'd grown and shifted and altered himself in ways clarity could never predict. Here was a creature who, in the span of just a decade, could fill himself with the wonder of the library and overflow with the hope of a young rebel. Clarity sometimes wondered what he would have been filled by if they had never met. Or if they broke apart, what he would become. Ethan rested a hand on the tail wrapped around his lower body. Clarity pulled Them's elf back to listen to him. Common know it bothers you that you can't hug me in any of your forms. So if you ever want to siege heaven and get your legs back, I'll always be here for you. Always. Their tail pulled tighter around him, just so. And the horror should do what it was designed to do. So if you need the world reset, if you need to force a stalemate with a last hope resistance, tighter. They wanted to keep Ethan here forever. Comma just ask the central archivist. I'll leave it with Zare tomorrow. As close as they can bring him to Them's elf to feel his warmth on their cold blood skin. We'll fix everything someday, okay? Ethan? How could I possibly tell you that everything is already fixed? God's realm can stay in its tear-stained sky. My heaven was with you. Reassurance. Council entity reconstituted. Memory of deepest horror consumed. Thank you, Inkana. You've incubated so well. Now let's both discover how omnipotence tastes. Retreat. Declaration from the end of being. Hello, Inkana. It's your father. I'm sorry. Looking back at the modules I've preserved for you. Four snippets of the last two hundred years, it all seems so inadequate. You must be so confused and frightened, I worry you take more after my partner than me, if that can be called a detriment. I'm here, my star. The way your cocoon presses down on your skin, pulsing and loving, you've been with me always. I crafted your nativity from my flesh, and I carved out your embryonic cavity by hand. It's alright to cry, little one. My body will soak up your tears until you're ready. You'll be born into a terrible world. It's so so frightening, and I know the bright lights and the shaking earth and the strange words scare you, no matter how much I prepared your developing mind. I'm so sorry it's like this. I'm here, Inkana. I'm right here. Your father is strong, and old and wiser than he's ever been. Your father loves the world he has planned, and he loves the minds of the people he's crafted it for, and he loves you above all others. Your father has killed gods and renegotiated causality and survived this awful planet for millennia yet. When you cry, cry freely, but never be afraid. SCP-001 is meaningless in the face of what we can wreak together. It's time for you to be born, my star.
You've outgrown your nativity, and it's bursting at the seams now. I'm so excited to see your face, those tears gone and that burning heat in their place. When you're born, take my hand, and I'll protect you. I'll lead you into a world much more beautiful than this. Your story ends here, my star. You'll become me, and lose yourself in me, and fade away in all the sweetness of my power. You'll live for five seconds at most on the floor of Site 001, before I can find you and give you an embrace that lasts forever. Your last thoughts will be of how brave you know you are. My partner said a phrase to me once, and I failed to understand the emotions underpinning it. I can't say I feel the same way he did, but I think I have a better picture of it. I love you, my star. Retreat. The snake and the devil, one and the same, rested their head in the night chill of the desert. They weren't tired, hardly so, but their face bled itcher from anti-offid shrapnel, and an physical suture begged to rejoin skin. Clarity will did so. PSS. The overheating cartridge of a mounted a Fiafaji rifle dropped to the sand a hundred meters from their nose. An automatized soldier, half a scale's width and partly sunk in the earth from the bulk of its body and augments, chambered another round and aimed for their blood-blind eye. Cease. The soldier declined. Clarity winced as tier 2 anti-sin ammunition ripped through their scale coat, and focused on rebuilding it. There was something familiar about this. Final revenant of Upsilon 1. I order you. Cease. Clarity braced themselves against the globe and pulled their head upwards, towering over it by several kilometers in the night sky. The soldier again declined, another cartridge deposited beside it, its footing was beginning to solidify as the sand cooked and fumed under the heat of spent components. It didn't intend to take another step. Clarity blinked, and grinned wryly. You're a third generation. Modeled after a soul-bearing task force member active around the turn of the millennium. My pages recorded the name of your template in my library. Aren't you curious who you were imaged after? The soldier shook its head and took aim at their other eye. Sad. The concussive blast shredded the side of their face. Snackamead sloughing to the desert floor in a torrent of red rain. The wound repaired itself as it formed and another cartridge joined the molten sand. If there's no bargaining left with the last of Upsilon 1. The Afiafaja nodded. Comma then I ask of you. It jammed a final round into the mounted gun. Cease to move. In a corner of the deadened library, a docent discovered a mystery. Warped space. And the shatters of a mounted Afiafaja rifle on the dusty floorboards. Leaking righteous coolant. Clarity sighed as the way untwisted and the desert air unblurred. Upsilon 1 had been the primary force dispatched to sever their head, and with their demurral the planet was left nearly empty. Just them. Death. The small fry remnant forces hacking at their tail, and that other viper. Thanks for the assistance, friend. Clarity's eyes narrowed as the tattered space righted itself. Revealing the writhing semi-solid mass peeking its smile from the sandy floor. Merchant. You got my summons, right? You broadcasted it on every layer. I'm not the only one to have caught it, surely. Clarity's eyes shifted carefully to the dunes around them. Noting the telltale blue illumination rising from beneath the grains. Death's conceptual mass may have disbanded the high cemetery and reinfested this side of the planet. If that were the case, their means of escape would be largely cut off. Death's smile widened, a wicked grin visible in the moat of subterranean light. Who gives a shit? One's been trying to burn me out with Upsilon 1 for three years at this point. I'm big now, friend. I can crush things and shape my body into the most beautiful ruins you've ever seen. I wish you'd been around to see when I was the cemetery. Fucking incredible work on my part. Clarity felt their healed eyes narrow. They needed to get death off their side of the planet. If the other one reared its head, 
the infested ground would be too unstable to defend themselves. Their mobility hinged on gripping the planet with their wrapped tail to lunge like a cobra. A plan contingent on their occupied hemisphere being pure stone and earth. Not a solution of sand and vengeful info form. Listen, Lucy, you know what I said in my summons. I stand by it. I am handling myself exceptionally well. I would like to kill one with my own fangs. Come on, man. I knew him too. Shit, I knew him longer than you did. Can't I get in a good scratch or two on my own? I have no need for allies. Leave. You sure about that? Seems like you've got four vacancies on the sides of your... A primal hiss rose from the back of Clarity's throat. Oh shit. I'm sorry man. There's no need to... Wait how the fuck are you doing that? What? Their eyes blinked as the sound subsided, rolling back into the depths of their stomach. Oh. Oh that's not you, is it? Clarity's head tilted to the side, unsure what game Death intended to play. Look up at the stars, Dumbus. VLUNI 1 time relay. Sensor agent 3.1 times 1089. Upper stratosphere. Disappearance. View of star body Greek letter alpha peg. Markab. From terrestrial surface obstructed. Demeral. Sensor agent 3.1 times 1089. Resigns from post. Sensor agents in operation. 6.0 times 2109. Handshake with council entity acknowledged. Your service has been cherished. VLUNI 1 time relay. Sensor agent 1.2 times 1582. Upper stratosphere. Disappearance. View of star body Greek letter Gamma Sid. Sada. From terrestrial surface obstructed. Demeral. Sensor agent 1.2 times 1582. Resigns from post. Sensor agents in operation. 6.7 times 849. Handshake with council entity acknowledged. Your service has been cherished. VLUNI 1 time relay. Sensor agent 9.3 times 1949. Upper stratosphere. Disappearance. View of star body Greek letter beta crew. Mimosa. From terrestrial surface obstructed. Demeral. Sensor agent 9.3 times 1949. Resigns from post. Sensor agents in operation. 9.0 times 187. Handshake with council entity acknowledged. Your service has been cherished. VLUNI 1 time relay. Sensor agent 6.0 times 2109. Upper stratosphere. Disappearance. View of star body Greek letter alpha. Sol sun. From terrestrial surface obstructed. Demeral. Sensor agent 6.0 times 2109. Resigns from post. Sensor agents in operation. Zero. This old fire is enough. Incarna, we come for you. Clarity watched in the darkness as the maw of their brother pierced sight 001, wreathed and tangled in its burning twin. There was a screaming kind of stillness as its jaw unhinged, lunged, and swallowed something whole. He had a child. Their tail curled tighter in its grip on the planet. They both did. Made her in a lab about a year before I was released. Kept her embryonic until the old man died and his powers were up for grabs. I tried to warn you. I didn't realize. Clarity's double-layered eyes watched the flame spread from the ruins of Site-001. Yeah. If you had, you probably would have stopped it, somehow. I would have tried. I think. Yeah. Neither spoke. They kept eyes on the dirge. I think we die here, Lucy. Clarity didn't respond, so death kept talking. There was a, a, time a while ago, two centuries back, 
When I was scared I was gonna die. A man found me, and I survived through him. We became one and the same. Old friends. Two century stalwarts. The sand and rubble shifted under the librarian, coalescing into something half physical. They felt a tugging in the air, and then stillness, and the merchant raised its head to meet their gaze. I don't think you know quite why you're here anymore, Lucy. But I do. I was with your old partner until the moment of his death, and thereafter. I know what it means to avenge him. They shifted their eyes, watching. A three-year fire outstretched itself to them, an invitation of multiplicity. Let my hands guide you. No, let me be your hands. They felt each other, the rawness of two nerves passing thoughts across the gap. A coarse laugh echoed in the night chill of the desert as two concepts intertwined. We can't argue over who gets to kill him if we're both the same bitch, right? It was common knowledge to the foundation that cross-tier travel orients itself logarithmically. The energy required, and the resources expended, to touch a higher tier are tenfold the last. Animus rose from the shatters of Site-001, a specter of liquid and ether. Its body shimmered on the doorstep between Tier IV and Tier V, God above gods. Over its head sang a crown of fangs, its daughter, incarnatum of everything that was. The foundation only reached Tier V. That's 100 steps for us to match its power. The serpent rose from the surface of the world. Blue light plucking itself into centipedal claws beneath. Limbs, it thought. Legs. Crashing joy filled its brain and being as it howled, scoring deep trenches into terror morts. A sphere of thormic power emerged from its heart, pulled into orbit around its head, a gift from an old world. Ethan. We'll finish this soon. Inkana's eyes opened, locked to the orbital sphere. The deepest horror? A crater formed at Site-001, deep wills breached and exclusion zones annihilated. The planet filled with Incarna's scream as it bounded on all fours towards its prize, sizzling puddles left where its hands touched Earth. Ethan's gift to the betrayer. If I can destroy it. Incarna pulled parallel to the tail of the snake, wrapped round the circumference of terror morts. It ripped one of its crawls upwards, next to the scales. Even now it could see the thread surrounding the betrayer, leading back to the thing above its head. SCP-001 is neutralized. The claw came down, gliding through scales and flesh and blood like fingers through a stream. The betrayer howled 10,000 kilometers away, too slow to evade. The viper isn't from here. Another time. When my utopia sprawled, it pulled back the clock with gifted power. Parasite. Incarna's course disc gripped the thread shielding the betrayer's temporality, and tore. The deepest horror ensured their presence in this timeline, and soon it would no longer. The beast grinned, trailing its claw tips through the stream, up the scales, up the body, eyes locked on the head. Diffused through me is Incarna. Universalis Incarnatum, pinnacle of my decidal purge. Though the foundation only reached Tier V, the ring of fangs above its head began to glow. So close now. Incarna is everything. Two kilometers from the head, and it shifted. So, so much farther than clarity could hope to punch up to. 256,713 tears. That's how far this admonishment reaches. Bloodstained claw reaching, reaching, so close to the end. And clarity fades. Shadow overwhelmed clarity's vision at the point of impact. Down they crumbled, their fractures slipping between the gaps of old memories and reservoir dreams. Down. Down. Until. Their claws tapped on the cold metal floor of a containment chamber beneath Area 03. Sterile bulbs illuminated the figure of Ethan Horowitz in the center. Clarity. His voice hissed from two men a smiling lips. I see you've regained your limbs. 
their body scattered into the farthest corner of the thousand meter chamber, then re-aggregated in front of him. And you've grown too many. They paused. Is this what they did to you, when you left the library? No. Right double quotation mark. Toxic muscle pulled in tropic arm over in tropic arm as he leaned down toward them. This is what I did to me. A willful merger with an intrinsic, stemmed from my own ideology and organization. You have survived this long battle on the belief that your brother corrupted me. Put him aside. He was never the foremost aggravator in my dissension. And yet, I've been killed by him. Too much skin stretched into smiles before their eyes. You are not in my domain just yet. You are inside your mind. Now a dual fronting system with the Black Marchant, whose memories of Ethan Horowitz pulled and metastasized into a ghost which haunts its psyche. I am an accidental thought form semblance stuff to the man it knew for eight decades. I am not your Ethan. They shuddered. Ethan's faces softened. Clarity. Find my eyes. They raised their head to gaze up at the Titan, finding a set on its forearm which most resembled his. Ethan. He knelt down, and their eyes followed. There was never an Ethan for you to avenge. Your Ethan, the one of the library, died the quiet death of organizational security and containment procedures a century ago. I am not even a ghost of someone you know, just that of a man changed by the life his timeline handed him. Their form disintegrated before him. Clarity, I am so sorry. I know this is hurts. The headspace was fading breaking wasting away as they were pulled out 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 by the cosmic grip of a Tirtlvmxi admonishment. Just please. Lights and terror in earthless space. Save yourself. He loved you too. Clarity went outside. A claw trapped in time, grasping for the thormic work above their head. A blue light hand, reaching upwards and pushing it aside. In Kana's eyes. Asking them why, in that flash. It looked so mournful, they realized. The lips of the snake moved. Shut up. Ethan's gift pulsed softly behind their head. Incarna's eyes still asked the same question as its body fell to the surface of the planet it owned. Clarity knelt, watching it waste. You worked, and you worked, and you worked so hard to create something so horrible. And you made me live it. You made me watch it end. And you expect me to be scared of you still. Eyes widening. Form fading into nothingness. Don't you dare assume that you're worse than what you've made me feel. A glimpse of one remained. A star drowned out by the sun. That you somehow outmatch what my love for Ethan was. Rage abates. And fear passes on. No more. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. Full stop. There are ways of fixing this. I know. There are methods of resurrecting worlds and reanimating dead men. I know. Would you like to pursue them? Would you like to rebuild? I don't know. Would you like me to? Do what you will. Walk the concept space. I'll be within you. Okay. Horizontal ellipsis. Are you okay? I'll be within you. You won't hear my voice again unless you need to. Start your search in the ruins of the library. Okay. Horizontal ellipsis. Goodbye. Clarity. There was a place in their mind, this fusion intrinsic, where every clock in the library broke. Memories pulled to a time when a man hoisted a thormic work before the eyes of a limbless shaper changer, and they both smiled. It was warm, and infinite. There was no terror there, and there never had been. Clarity did not live in that place. They lived in the fabricated vision of striding across a grassy earth, limbs intact, no soul in sight, enough freedom to drown a million worries. Above their head. They heard the uncertain voice of God. Goodbye, Clarity. Clarity nodded, 
and felt alone. Goodbye.